How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be talking about aftercare uh, with the Yamadori. Uh, really from when you first collect it through to uh, finally having it fully established uh, and, and growing well. Uh, Yamadori is, is, is never easy but I mean the, probably the easiest part is actually the collecting. It's the aftercare that most people fall down on and um, improving that success rate uh, of the aftercare is, is critical. Now I wrote a blog post about four years ago, three or four years ago, and it's the one blog post that really, really sort of resonated with a lot of people. And I explained a technique that I used uh, for increasing the survival rate uh, of Yamadori, uh, particularly with uh, hawthorns, blackthorns, uh, really most deciduous species. And I'm going to be covering that later, uh, particularly in the second video. But um, what I'm going to do first is um, explain really how I collect on the mountain. Um, I do prepare um, the trees prior to, to collecting. I don't just simply uh, go out and search and then dig. Um, I'll identify where the trees are. Um, they're usually on, on private land, which is really, really good. Um, I can put a tag on them, uh, usually bright yellow, uh, so that uh, the no I know the trees that, uh, that I've, I've tagged. Uh, I will take a photograph of them, uh, so I remember, uh, and ideally uh, look on Google Maps uh, in reference to where the trees are. Uh, they're usually in, in small clusters, so it's not, it's not very difficult. So yesterday I went and collected three trees, all of them hawthorns. Um, they all display really nice bark. You can see where I have actually made uh, the, the, the cuts previously on the hill. This is quite a nice tree. Um, I believe it's got a, a, a pretty good root ball. Um, what I will do is I will cut uh, cut back some of these long uh, long shoots. We don't really need them. The, the reason we don't need them is because they're not really going to form part of the bark, and they don't actually have um, any old old bark on them, uh, which is really the things that we desire most. I can cut these back. I really don't. I really don't need them. I keep them out of the way. This one. And we have another long one here. You can see. So we can take it, we can take those right off. And one of the great things about hawthorn uh, and blackthorn, uh, one of the reasons they make good hedging material, is that they do bud back easily. Particularly when uh, when you cut them back, they will sprout from from those new cuts, and that's a really good way of encouraging new growth uh, on your on your on your branches. So let's um, let's uh, cut away here. Let's take, see see the roots that we've got, and uh, we'll um, we'll see how it how it goes on. I'm being very careful here with trimming this out. I don't want to damage any roots that are underneath. I can't remember on the hill what this was like, so I think it's got a, 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 some good surface roots and some fine roots. So it's got a lot of really nice fine roots. There was one major cut here that you can see uh, that, that I took off, but that appears only to be sort of feeding this, this one branch here. So all of this is being fed by, by this root mass here. It's looking really good. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because it's my birthday next week and I'm in my mid 60s I do have to resort to having my glasses on so let me check this out here I'm going to remove any stones as you can see I'm going to keep a certain amount of the um, mountain soil on here which is close to the trunk um, 
and use a chopstick here. Just tease a little bit out, particularly under the under the base of the tree. There's not a this, there's a root here which is coming across. I'm leaving this on so that it will help the tree establish. But at a later stage, I will remove it. Uh, lots of fine root here. There's some root which is not hawthorn. That is not hawthorn. The tree was growing very close to ash trees. It's a shame we lost a little bit of root there. So we've got to be careful. I don't want the ash in ash ash tree root in there. That looks pretty good to me. I'll just tidy up a couple of these thicker roots. There we go. So it's got a nice, and it's nice and flat of course, look at that. You see how flat it is. There's a stone in the middle there, let's have a look. Because I want to put in my own mix into this. So I'm not, being, not going to remove everything because there'll be some beneficial stuff in there some fungus in there which we want to keep okay so you can you can see that root there that's coming across the across the front that will eventually come off but not now but it looks we we do a bit of a really good nabari on this which i'm very very pleased about um in a perfect world i'd like to sort of plant it in this in this angle to to really lose that thick root under the under the ground but I plant it in the best way possible so that it will survive. That's what we're after doing, is survival. So I've identified the right size of pot. Uh, it's exactly right. It's not too small, it's not too large. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, putting a new piece of Yamadori in an over large box. A, you're using much soil. A lot more salt B, it's heavy to carry around the around um, so it's important that you get exactly the right size of pot to put your Yamadori in um, because if you have too much soil around it that's just going to get wet it's not going to uh, improve the soil uh, sorry improve the, the roots any so it's very important that you get the, the, the right size pot so let's uh, let's introduce the tree into it let's see let's see how it fits and then we'll start putting some uh, some potting mixture in there and as you can see I've wired it um, get that wiring position um, I always tend to use extra long wires because there's nothing worse again than being mean and cutting your wire a bit too short uh, and that would just drive you crazy is that to add pieces to it that's not good at all so here we go so here's, here's, here's the tree I think it fits very very well indeed that's kind of kind of the position that I want and get all those coming down inside it so you can see it fits really well in there now this is not the final planting position that's very important to, to consider that uh, I do eventually want to tip it up like this because we don't want this right angle as, 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 as you see it now but again we're restricted to putting it into, into this pot uh, it will eventually have that large root removed and then we can then we can stand it up right but you can see we've got a lot of root there um, let's get some soil in there so my soil mixture is already served I've had this prepared and you see it's very very open it's a combination of lava akadama and pumice um, probably about 40% akadama uh, and then the rest made up of the pumice and, and the lava let's get the tree in there we go just a wee bit I 
But what I am going to do is I'm actually going to get some sphagnum moss and put it alongside of that thick root that we that, that I cut off earlier. I need to get this root in there. One second. There we go. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie this. Hi, I'm not going to tie the root. I'm going to tie it onto the branch. This is not a case of it being, you know, beautifully wired into the pot. This is a case of se securing the tree for the best chance of survival. I'm not concerned at the moment either with having um, any rubber against here because this eventually will get cut off it's too thick this is a lovely lovely first branch I won't tie this side in yet until I've got some soil in there it's, it's, it's pretty firm actually quite pleased with that I'm gonna get the sphagnum moss this is sphagnum moss which I, uh, I collect myself uh, it's really oh, fabulous stuff I love the smell of it. Oh. So I'm going to put that down alongside of that root. It's almost like I'm, I'm air layering that root. It's going to give it the best chance. And that moisture will help, of course. So I'll show you that. It's going in. Around there. You can see that the tree already is, is, is quite firm in the pot and I've not taken any root off it that I took off uh, off the mountain. I'm going to trim that a wee bit short so then it'll go in. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this around the soil, and we'll um, we'll come back when I've uh, when I've finished um, putting all the soil in place, and then I'll wire this second um, second branch in. What I'll probably do in actual fact is I'll probably bring it to this position here. Yeah, that's probably that's a good idea. I'll take it to there. Again, it's on a piece of dead. So I don't really need to bother with any any rubber. As you can see that. All right. So let me fill this up, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll see how it how it's uh, how it's coming together. So we've got the soil in. What I'm going to do is I'm working it down into all those little cavities. We do not want any air cavities whatsoever, because what will happen there is the the roots will dry out. We don't want that to happen. So this really nice open soil mixture is working its way perfectly. I do this in a circular motion. Because these are plastic pots as well, what you can do is you can actually tap the side of the pot to, to jiggle the soil in position. Let's get it all going down through there. can see that the soil has actually really worked its way down so I use a plastic mallet for this really works a trick I wouldn't recommend doing this on a on a proper bonsai pot.
Let me make sure every air pocket is gone. Here sticking out, let's put him in. Every root is precious. This is not something to be rushed, this is something to do. It's so important that you get this done right. Okay, so that's the end of part one. Uh, part two is really where um, the important part comes uh, for establishing. Uh, so tune into part two. I'll see you on the other side.